Hello, so a video for some of the Geiger counter nerds today. This is a Polish RS-70 radiation alarm. I did a video on one of these ages ago and Surviving the Apocalypse did a video on one recently. Um, so what I'm just going to do to start with is power it on so you can see how they work. Um, I'd recommend just watching his video on it if you want a sort of explanation of what they do. But what's going to make this video pretty interesting is I'm going to take one apart and we're going to see can you make these a bit more versatile by getting access to the Geiger Muller tube. Because interestingly, there is a little GM tube that sits about there on the reader, just below where the um, sort of wire input is if you power it on wires, not batteries. And it's actually a standard Polish Geiger Muller tube that was in some of the Polish Cold War, you know, Geiger Muller counters, um, not too far off from the Soviet ones. So, what we'll do is we've got a bench voltage transformer here. Uh, B Store actually really kindly sent me a little USB thing to power it on, which was handy, but I'm not going to use that today just because it's easier with this. So it's meant to be 6 volts input, so let's do that up till we get to volts, and let's put that all the way up. And what's that at? 4.9, so let's wind this one back a little bit. Do the more sensitive one, then turn that up, and there we go, we're about 6 volts there. So there you go, if you can see that, that's set to 6 volts, that's what this is meant to run on. So we'll do the circuit test, and there we go, that's working. Let's turn the irritating alarm on. You can see, like, every time it does that, it pulls um, about 1 amp through it. Oh, that's quite interesting. Or, oh, sorry, about 0.1 amp. Um, and the voltage goes up and down a little bit. So, anyway, let's turn the speaker on. Yeah, let's flick that off. So, its irritating system works fine. Um, so, how this works is it has the half Ronken per hour, 5 Ronken per hour, and 30 Ronken per hour alarm thresholds. Um, but what we're going to do is open it up and see is there anything in this? Um, spoiler, I already know there is because I've taken them apart before. Um, but, you know, more for the sake of a video where people who could maybe get one of these very cheaply online, especially, you know, some of my Polish viewers where they might be able to pick these up very, very cheaply, um, you know, could they actually um, take them apart and maybe make much better use for them? And I think the answer is going to be yes. Although, again, people are into electronics far more, far more than me might find this more useful, but. Anyway, if you want to see a video of one of these being opened up and having a look at all the insides, let's do that now. Okay, so this is a very easy Geiger Muller counter to get inside. What we want to do is take this off and this off, which are the wax seals, which are basically so nobody's fucked with the calibration. So they're going to make quite a mess because um, they're old dried wax. But once those are off, we can get into the actual um, guts of it. So I'll tell you what, let's um, get these two screws undone first. And then we'll go back to those other ones. But basically the RS-70, it's got the back bake light -like little box bit you take off, then you've got a circuit board bit to take off, and then, once you've got into that, you can get at the bit the Geiger Muller tube's on. Now, I'll get my multimeter as well in a minute, because what will be interesting, and this is what I really want to find out, is, is there some way you can connect the multimeter on here and actually read the radiation level like you can with a lot of other meters? Now, obviously, on a lot of meters, it's very straightforward because the multimeter attaches where the ampere or the screen would be on the Geiger Muller counter, um, you know, or one of the general sort of boxes, and you use that. So, what I want to know of this one is: is it possible to, um, you know, connect something um, to somewhere in it and then get a digital readout? Because if so, it might be able to, you know, you might be possible just be able to wire up a little display to one and have it as a radiation alarm that way. Also, I suppose the question a lot of people might want to ask is, which I'm sure it would be entirely possible, is, is it possible to replace the Geiger Muller tube in it, or change the threshold somehow? And this is again for somebody who's a lot more into electronics than me. But, you know, to have this to be something that may, rather than going off at, you know, the Ronken range, have it go off at the milli Ronken range. So, have it go off at point, you know, five of a milli gun or one milli gun or something, then go off at, you know, like ten milli gun or something, because then that would make it a lot more useful as a background radiation detector. So anyway, these wax seals on this one are being a bit of a dick. They're not wanting to, um, you know, break out the way. If you're wondering what these are on these things, it's wax seals, basically, so once it was calibrated, they'd know if anyone had, you know, opened them up to have messed with the calibration. Um, which is a good way of doing it. It's better than just sticking a sticker on it like they used to do with the Mark IIs and uh, MD3s in Britain. If this ends up taking ages to get this, these screws, you know, access to the screws, I'll just cut the video in here and then um, cut to it once I've got this open. But 
sometimes with these the wax just pops off and other times it does this where it's basically mummified and um, doesn't want to move. So, can I get that to move? Not very easily. Right, tell you what, I'm going to cut the video here and then I'll cut back once I've got the screws off and all the wax removed and I'll also go and get some pliers from the other room because I have a feeling some of the bits inside might need pliers to start untwisting. Right, after a bit of an annoying segment, this should pop off now. There we go. So that's the back of the case. It's just literally a bake light bit of box with four screws on it. So that's that bit out of the way. Now, what we need to do is get these four screws off now. And this is the bit that keeps the circuit board attached to the main bit of the unit. Now, quite a cool looking circuit board. Um, let me just zoom the camera in a bit there so you can see it and it'll hopefully focus on it. Yeah, I'll just do that and then we'll um, zoom out again. So yeah, there you go, there's the circuit board. And I don't know if it says it on this one. Yeah, it says RS70, oh, X on this one. Wonder if this is a slightly different model of RS70. It did feel a bit heavier than my other RS70, I would say that, so. Let's, let's get these screws undone. And again, this might be where I need to get the pliers. So I have a feeling when I tried to do the, undo these screws before, they did not want to move um, on my last RS70. But what I can do if it really doesn't want to move is just actually end up getting my, um, what's it, the uh, electric screwdriver. And that will generally always move. Ah, there we go. That big boy there has got in there, even though he's bit too big for those screws. Right, so that's this one. I'm just gonna, because it's a handy case to put them in, I'm just gonna put any screws I take out in here and I won't lose them. Isn't that handy? Now, I don't know if this is what I was gonna say before, I don't know if this is gonna be like my other RS70, but inside there's actually a thing that says made in Poland in English inside, which I thought was quite funny because these are made obviously during the period of communist Poland. So it was interesting that, you know, if you actually opened up the units, they, um, had a thing inside that said made in Poland um, in English. Um, you know, I'm, I'm surprised you didn't kind of get notes in saying we are hostages of the Soviet Union or something, which would be true, but you know, I've, I've not actually seen that inside one, but I just thought it was funny that, you know, it actually did say made in Poland in English inside. We'll see if this one says that when we get at the right bit of the circuit board. Uh, that's that one. I have a feeling that when I took my last RS70 apart, I didn't actually um, bother um, putting all these washers back in because I found it actually went together well enough without them. You know, it would probably rattle a little bit more if you were to shake it, but I just found, you know, it was all the bits fit together well enough and were easier to open up and close back up without these little washers in there, so... But, you know, that's not something you should do. It's just, like me, I'm saying, like, being lazy when I put some of these things back together when I've taken them apart, going, oh, that's kind of an unnecessary washer. That's why I like actually some of the Soviet stuff, is they very rarely seem to have a lot of these washers in. Right, what should happen now is this should actually lift off the board. There we go. So there's that. So what we're going to do is peel that back so you can see the inside. So here's the guts of the unit. It's in two bits. Made in Poland, there we go, it says made in Poland. So anyway, in a minute we'll zoom in um, to have a look. But there's a load of your electronics and your calibration, I believe. Um, I think the R11, R9 and R7 are the calibration screws for uh, how sensitive it is. Um, those little bits there, which are a bit out of frame. But those are the free calibration adjustment bits, I believe. Um, but you can see all the stuff in here. So you can see some capacitors under there, some capacitors there, there's loads of diodes or resistors. Um, you know. Oh, they are. Oh, that would be resistors, wouldn't it? Then D would be diodes, T would be transistors, or, um... Yeah, anyway, like I said, I'm not an expert on electronics, but there you go. But hopefully the people that are watching this video are into electronics finding this interesting. Now, this is where it gets more interesting of this. This is the base bit of the unit. Now, if I do this, you might see some of the switch move on the inside, if I can find where the switch is from underneath. Yeah, there we go. That bit there is your switch mechanism. See that? But anyway, uh, that's that bit. Now, we'll zoom in on where it says made in Poland, but this is the really interesting bit of the board here, because this is where our Geiger Muller tube is. So, let's zoom in there. So what you can hopefully see is that says made in Poland. <laughs> um, 
And again, like, as like I said, I find that funny. But anyway, what we want to do is get this bit out because underneath here is the Geiger Muller tube. Then what the first experiment is going to be is once we get this out, while it's attached to the circuit board but is accessible, can we get the RS70 to sound off an alarm if I put a sample directly against the Geiger Muller tube? Like, um, you know, a radium dial or something, something like that. Because in theory, I reckon that should work. So, we'll just lift out now. I don't really want to, you know, yank a wire out. So, get those guys out. Is that going to come away yet, or is there still some bits holding it down? Right, I think this one I might need to undo these two screws as well, because on my last one I don't think these two screws needed to come out to do that. I'll just zoom you out a bit more again. Ooh, wrong way. Um, but yeah, I think on this one I might need to also get these two screws out. The good thing at least doing this on video is I can look up where everything went back in. Those are the two battery compartments down there, by the way. Um, for the D-cells if you ran them off the internal batteries. So let's get this guy out. Again, the pliers come in handy here because they're pretty small little bits. There we go. And is that going to lift out now or is there still that other screw holding them in? Yeah, I reckon I'm going to have to get all the screws out. Yes, yeah, so that's weird. That's a bit different than I think the circuit board on my last RS70 because I'm pretty sure on the previous one I didn't actually have to take four screws out. I think this bit was only held in by two screws, but as I said, I'm sure they change all the time with these sort of things. Okay, so now let's see, can we get this guy to flip over? Careful, yours there. Yeah, there we go. And this is the important bit. Ready? When I get him out, there's a metal pig. Ah, now that's different on this one. Okay. That is different, right. Let's get the screwdriver down here and flip him over. He's wedged in pretty tight here, but this is the bit we wanted to get at, look. See this? Oh, when I'm out of frame. This is the standard Geiger Muller tube with some steel or lead around it, so that um, it doesn't register beta radiation. So it's gamma only, essentially, but it is a beta receiving Geiger Muller tube. I believe it will be a DOB50. Uh, which is the name of that tube. So what I'm just going to do now is get these other screws out so we can get the lead pig off, or the steel pig, whatever it is. Probably quite a handy thing to keep around. Um, we're essentially just going to firstly increase the sensitivity of the meter that way. And then what we can do is re-screw, you know, this back onto its base plate that way. I think that green wire is probably a ground wire, but I'm not sure. I said I'm not an electrician. Um, if I can... It's all getting in the wrong way, isn't it? Um, yeah. Just get this guy out. There's that. Then two more screws to remove. And then we should be able to... That's an actual angle I can hold it at here. What we should be able to do then is... Um, firstly, do a little test to see, as I said, can I put a strong check source next to this, maybe the dial that was in the um, DP63, the, maybe a good check source, um, or the check source that was inside the um, Chinese Type 75, because that's a big boy check source. Uh, anyway, like, there's a washer that's fallen off there, but never mind. Let's see now, there we go, um, dun dun. Now I need to get this out without breaking a wire, I have to resolder it, but essentially the Geiger Muller tube look is just in here slightly. So what I'm going to have to do um, is just carefully prise him out. I know this does come out of here because I had to put him into here and with my last one I did obviously manage to do this. The last um, one of these I had the RS70. Annoyingly what ended up happening with it, um, I took it all apart, managed to do that without damaging anything and then accidentally over vaulted it and blew something when I um, you know, put it back together to uh, do a test on. But uh, there you go, so what I'm just doing now, I might stop the video for a minute, is just get all this loose and out the way without, you know, doing it carefully, not on the rush on camera. And then we can um, have a play about with this on the power supply. Okay, so what you might be able to see from here, but I might have to adjust the camera angle slightly, is, uh, let me just do that so I can see. See that? The DOB 
tube, the Dob 50, it was a Dob 50, is sticking out there. So what I've done is it's still on the circuit board and all that, but this big steel housing or lead housing, whatever it is, has been taken off of it. So, um, and I've got some check sources there. So what we're going to do is plug this back in, and it was minus and plus like that. Let's turn this back on. Check it's definitely at 6 volts, it is, because we don't want it more than that. Right, do the circuit test, good, that's working. Right, now the interesting bit. We'll set it to 0 0.5 Ronken, and then let's put some strontium-90 directly on the tube. Let's try the Chinese one. There we go, look, it's working. Look at that. Right, let's put the alarm back on. So we're at 0 0.5 Ronken. Wow, 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 we've got a um, RS-70 responding. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? So there you go. The RS-70 actually can receive beta radiation. Now, for the next experiment, let's just flick this all off, because I don't want to electrocute myself or damage anything. So yes, this can receive beta radiation. So what I might do with this one is, before putting all this back together, get a drill as much as drilling through one of these cases seems like a crime and basically drill open ah sorry no I think it's the very bit at the top isn't it yeah so I might drill oh, I'm taking it all out of frame there I might drill this bit of the case so um, the Geiger Chimula tube can actually be exposed to beta radiation that way so there's that right so that's that bit at least so what I can also do is there's the calibration controls on here, so let's flip this back over again. If I can get this all out without breaking anything, there we go. So here's our calibration controls. So I'm going to assume, like most of these detectors, that turning them clockwise increases the sensitivity. Um, assuming it's this way around and not the other way around. Hopefully I've not over made these sensitive and now they're going to burn out. But it looks like one of those things that doesn't let you put them too high on. So anyway, let's pop this back down onto its um, little thing. And I guess the last experiment, if I use my multimeter, would be to work out if there's anywhere where it actually does take a recording. And I'm sure it has to somehow because it's uh, got an alarm feature that goes off. So anyway, let's put that back round like that with the Dob 50 tube sticking out. Plug him back in. Flick him on, double check it's 6 volts and I don't over volt it, yes it is. Right, circuit test is working fine. Right, now let's see if it's more sensitive than it was before. I think it is slightly more sensitive, but not by much. But anyway, so that's mostly what I wanted to check with that. So we've got, um, now without electrocuting myself, which might be a bit difficult, let's work out if we can figure out how this whereabouts up with a multimeter. If I wire this guy up. Um, let's figure out if I go to the millivolt setting, where it would actually report the number to the display. Well, not the display, but the alarm sort of and everything else. Um, Again, I'm not I'm not an expert with electronics, so you know there's that. But what I want to figure out is obviously somewhere it does record and respond back to the buzzer and everything else. So it does have you know a sensitivity type thing somewhere on it, but where that would be I don't know. But uh, let's just stick these in here somewhere. I'm getting a number on that, there's more to do with this, obviously. Ooh, what about these two little bits on the display? Let's just connect these up, if I can, with the crop clips. I know that's not a display, it's the buzzer, but you know what I mean. Uh, if you've worked with similar electronics before, you'll know what I'm getting at here. Ooh, that slipped. But what I'm interested in is basically this little bit here. I can get that crop clip where I want it. All right, because this is essentially giving, um, was giving a little bit of a reading just now, um, 
Let me just put the strontium-90 near the GM tube. And I can see the light lighting up inside, but that's um, not registering anything different on that. Right, for now I won't bother doing all the stuff for the multimeter, but somebody into electronics watching this might be going, you need to attach it to that, and then they can tell me in the comments, or they can do it themselves and make a video, which would be great. But there you go. So what we've done is we've got the RS-70 actually responding to beta radiation and going, aloft, um, going off even with 0 0.5 Ronkin alarm. So what I'm just going to do before I end the video is I'm going to stop it here for a pause, but what I'm going to do, this bit of the case here, without drilling for any wires hopefully, just drill, I know it feels a bit like a crime drilling into a nice Bakelite old case, but you know, these are dirt cheap apparently, you know, according to the people who live in Poland, you know, most people don't do anything ever with them. Um, so I'm just going to open that section of the case up, so hopefully once I put this all back together, I can actually have an RS-70 that will alert you about beta radiation as well as gamma. So let's do that now, and then that will be the end of the video. Okay, so last little bit of the video, the case is all back together, but as you can see, I've drilled a little hole there, which I could always extend at some point if I wanted to, and the Geiger Muller tube's under there. So after I've done the rest of this video, I'm just going to put a bit of sellotape over there, so contaminants or water can't get in, you know, through that bit, but beta radiation can still get through. So anyway, let's rewire this guy up again. Check that's all working. Right, circuit test is working. Excellent. Right, now let's just try this again. So, with that there, putting this over there, and I don't know if the tube's going to be close enough to the hole saying that. Ah, that's annoying. Right, in theory, this should work fine. Let me just put another bit of SR90 there. I think this bit might fit through the hole, so I don't know if that would work. But... Right, in theory, I think this would work. I think it's just simply a case of, um, you know, not being able to um, inverse square law and all that, you know, not being able to get the check source close enough to the hole. But there you go. The, the concept, I think, in theory is good enough. So what I'll do now, now I've finished the video, is just maybe extend that hole a little bit bigger, um, you know, and then put a load of um, sellotape over it. But thanks for watching. Um, and hopefully this video has proved that, yes, you can get like a load of other detectors, the RS-70 to sound off on the 0.5 Rontgen setting. Um, and now it's up to people who are much better than me at um, electronics, because I'm really not into electronics at all, to figure out how you could maybe put a digital display on it using a multimeter, you know, so you can actually have it working like a traditional Geiger counter, because it seems nearly all the parts are there to do that. And maybe for somebody who's really into electronics, working out what resistors or transistors or whatever else to change. So you could change it from you know, maybe Rontgen's to milli Rontgen, because wouldn't that be good if you could have 0 0.5 milli Rontgen to sound it off, you know, as in it's a bit higher than background, but not too much, 5 milli Rontgen and 30 milli Rontgen. That would be really good as having it as an actual, you know, background radiation alarm. I mean, I know it's gigantic compared to modern little Geiger counters, but still, you know, would make it a bit more versatile. So there you go. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. This has been quite a good fun project, but again, I've got a lot of stuff to clean up now, but hopefully you've enjoyed it.